So should we agree that um, alcohol is a drug? And not only a drug, but a very harmful drug. Funny that it's legal in this country. Well, it's legal everywhere, I believe. But yes, alcohol is a drug. I believe that's a common accepted fact. I came across a, actually I had a friend share this with me. It's a um, article in Huffington. Wait a minute, let me get back to it. It's article in, <laughs> I hate trying to control the mouse and talk and think all at the same time. Huffington, Huff Post Gay Voices. Okay, I have a friend who is gay and he shared this article with me. And the author is called Jincy Lumpkin. J-I-N-C-E-Y-L-U-M-P-K-I-N -E and it's called Dear Government, Get Out of My Vagina and I'm going to read this article but before I do I want to make a point about something that says in here about consent okay um, and this goes back to what happened to me at the bar and the fact that all my male friends basically side with the bartender and tell me, well one of them especially tells me that that I need to take accountability and um, I need to just be okay with the fact that I've had nothing but bad shit happen to me since I um, let myself be pressured while I was intoxicated into something that I've regretted ever since and has completely destroyed or has tried very hard to destroy my life. But the guy whose idea it was and the guy who was sober and the guy who pressured me into this thing um, is getting to skate through and he still keeps his job and nothing bad has happened to him and and it's okay for him to slander my name behind my back and destroy my reputation and cause me to lose everything that was dear to me even if it was imaginary these people that I thought were my friends it was still kind of nice to have the delusion that you know I I was welcome and wanted and cared about this article says what is consent um, Consent is the key issue in the modern day definition of rape. Rape does not require that the rapist use physical force. The issue is whether the person who is being raped actually agreed to have sex. People who are asleep cannot consent to sex. People who have been drugged cannot consent to sex. In many jurisdictions, minors cannot consent to sex. I like that part, though, that says people who have been drugged cannot consent to sex. I was quite drugged, if you want to call alcohol a drug. This is a head bartender, a head bartender who is a skilled uh, observer of human behavior during the process of being intoxicated. This bartender's job is to cut people off when they become too intoxicated that they lose their judgment. This bartender deliberately gave me shots of alcohol after I reached the point where I had had enough. And then after he did that, he proceeded to pressure me into something that if I had not been intoxicated, I would never have gone along with. And even when I was intoxicated, I pretty much cried the whole time. I don't think I want to call what happened to me rape. Because... I don't feel like I, I was raped. I feel like what happened to me that night was a real minor thing compared to somebody who really is raped. But it fucked with my head at a time that I was at the lowest, probably one of the lowest points in my life, my self-esteem was trashed. It fucked with my head. And thinking this man was my friend, I took my confusions to him in every way I could to try to Thinking he was my friend, he would care to know that I was confused and maybe care to sit down with me and try to help me sort through what his actions did to my head that night. Instead, he thought that uh, going behind my back and telling people that I was after him and letting people think that I was a whore and a slut, that I would go after this poor, poor man who had a wife and two adorable little girls. People think that about me and treat me like, like I'm garbage and shit and I don't even get to know why the hell people that I don't even know and they don't even know me are treating me. I had a, I had a, um, 
There was a guy at this bar named Darren. I really liked Darren. I really, really did. And one day Darren just suddenly was incredibly nasty to me. He, he, I went up and sat by him thinking, you know, like, like assuming that it, we were good. And he was rude. He was positively rude. And, and it, it hurt my feelings really bad. And all I can think is Darren found out that I was after this married man with two adorable little children and had contempt for me because he found this out. But the, the, the funny part of the story is I was not after this man who had a wife that I actually liked and had two adorable little children. I wasn't even remotely after him. I valued his friendship. I was trying to ask him to help me understand the turmoil and the confusion that his actions caused me after he got me drunk at this bar. Anyway, on that, on that note, I want to read at least part of this article that I think is very good. Called, Dear Government, Get Out of My Vagina. If you get upset about liberal vagina politics, you might want to click over to another page now, okay? This week I wanted to write about the kinky sex I've had. But guess what? I'm tired of being called a slut and a whore, so I want to take time and explain to everyone once again why I do what I do. However, first I'd like to talk about the current climate in which both sexual freedom and women's rights are being attacked. Let's begin with rape. Just so we're clear, here is the dictionary definition of rape, a type of sexual assault usually involving sexual intercourse, which is initiated by one or more persons against another person without that person's consent. What is consent? Consent is the act of reason and deliberation. A person who possesses and exercises sufficient mental capacity to make an intelligent decision demonstrates consent by performing an act recommended by another. Consent assumes a physical power to act and a reflective, determined, and unencumbered exertion of these powers. Consent is the key issue in the modern day definition of rape. rape does not require that the rapist use physical force. The issue is whether the person who is being raped actually agreed to have sex. People who are asleep cannot consent to have sex. People who have been drugged cannot consent to sex. In many jurisdictions, minors cannot consent to sex. Rape is not a crime of passion. It is a crime of violence. Rape doesn't only happen to women. Wearing a short skirt and stilettos doesn't invite rape. Most rape doesn't occur in a dark alleyway by a creepy stranger. More than two-thirds of victims know they're rapists. So what does that mean? It means that in the vast majority of cases, a knife isn't being held to your throat while a convicted felon hisses. You know you like it although that does happen. The, defini the definition of rape has evolved over time. Not so long ago in America, there was a belief that a husband should be able to have sex freely with his wife, whether whenever it pleased him to do so. Therefore, a wife could not prosecute her husband for raping her. Sex was considered, considered a marital duty. Scrolling down. You might wonder why our ideas of rape have changed over time. Well, there are a variety of reasons for the shift in thought. First, rape victims and their lawyers clocked countless hours in the courtroom fighting to make judges and juries understand that rape is a serious crime that is perpetrated in many forms and that it inflicts emotional and sometimes physical harm on the victim and that the rapist deserves punishment for inflicting the harm. Also, the women's rights movement helped to clarify that women and men are equals. And therefore, among, sorry, I gotta change this, among many rights, we have the right to make choices about who can and cannot touch our bodies. Clearly, this is a simplification because I don't have the time to explain all the causes that changed our attitudes. I have to make a side note. This, this bartender, well, it was pretty much one-sided what happened in his car. He did. He did some reciprocation to me that I resent very much. Um, very small reciprocation, but still. He did touch in places that I wouldn't have let him if I had been sober. Back to it. Oh, wait. Have we changed our attitudes about rape? I'm sure 
I'm not sure that all of us have. In the past few weeks, there have been a lot of discussion about rape all over the news because of the upcoming election. Here are a few remarks. If it's a legitimate rape, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. But let's assume that maybe that didn't work or something. I think there should be some punishment. But the punishment ought to be of the rapist and not attacking the child. Todd Atkin, U.S. Representative from Missouri and Republican nominee for the Senate, speaking on television defending his opinion that abortion should not be allowed in cases of rape. Scrolling down, I've always adopted the idea, the position, that the method of conception doesn't change the, the de definition of life. Paul Ryan, U.S. Representative from Wisconsin, <laughs> so this is scary, and Republican vice presidential candidate responding to Atkins' comments about legitimate rape. Let's take the issue of abortion off the table and focus specifically on the semantics. Concerning Atkins' statement, putting the words legitimate and rape side by side actually delegitimatizes the entire concept of rape because it implies that some rapes are not valid. Certainly there are times when a rape is alleged but no rape occurred. Such, as, such a case is not an illegitimate rape but a false accusation. As stated above, any time there is non-consensual sex, that is, by definition, rape. There's no such thing as illegitimate rape. So, I guess if I take this literally, side note, any time there is non-consensual sex, that is, by definition, rape. So, even if it was a minor thing, what happened to me in this man's car, the fact that I was drugged, dot, 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 question mark, question mark, question mark, do I want to, I mean... I'm sorry. My, my therapist said that I could technically call what happened to me rape, even though there was no. But I don't feel rape, so we're not going to go there. But at the same time, I had friends who tell me that I should be accountable. And the guy who did this, did this thing and whose idea it was shouldn't be accountable because He's married and he has two adorable children and we don't want to hurt that marriage or put that marriage at risk because little kids might lose their daddy. So for that reason, I get to be treated like shit and, not, and I should be okay with it. Anyway, back to the article. I watched the interview in which Ryan explained his view that rape can be considered a method of conception and at no time did he mention that rape is a crime. This is Ryan, the guy who's running for vice president. These statements are fraught with misconceptions. For instance, contrary to Aiken's, Aiken's, I have no idea how to say his name, assertions, a woman's body does not reject a rapist's sperm like a Pepsi, like a Pepsi machine rejects a bad nickel. The discussion that these men are having completely neglects to mention the experience of rape for the rape survivor. I'd like to fill you in on that part. As I have written in as I have written about in the past, I was date raped. My rapist did not wear a con condom. Because my rapist struck, because my rapist stuck his penis into my vagina while I was asleep, I did not consent. When I woke up, I told him no, but it was too late. And he was, and he ejaculated inside me. I was worried that I would get pregnant because I did not take the pill. I was also worried it might contract HIV or another STD. I was afraid to tell anyone for months because I thought that no one would believe me. My rape is not an exception to the rule. It's a story that is similar to thousands, hundreds of thousands, or perhaps millions of other people's rape cases. Millions? You might think that that's an exaggeration, but likely not. I didn't report my rape to the authorities. I'm not listed in the, in the statistics because I never told the police. Only reported cases of rape make the statistics. I was also molested by my father from the ages of 10 to 13. Therefore, I am an incest victim as well. I didn't report that to the authorities either. Again, my reasoning was that I thought no one would believe me or that I might be blamed for the sexual assault. Discussing non-consensual sex in public form without mentioning its criminal, 
criminality is irresponsible and dangerous. The politicians' remarks create an atmosphere in which the blame for the perpetration of the crime is shifted from the rapist to the victim. Hmm, kind of know how that feels. Excuse me, I gotta scroll down some more. This is long, I might not get the whole thing in. Now let me add back to the mix the question of abortion. I've never had an abortion, however my rape could have easily led to a pregnancy. As far as I can remember, I was not penetrated by my father, but had he raped me after I hit puberty around the age of 12, the rape could have resulted in pregnancy. Would I have had an abortion in either case? I'm not sure. Would I have wanted the option? Damn straight I would have. Why is the government why is the government co so concerned about my uterus? Why do these reactionaries consider a collection of cells that are injected into a womb without consent to be a person worthy of protection under the law? Why do pro-life advocates not only I'm sorry, why do pro-life advocates not apply the same all life is sacred argument to life that is ended because of war or the death penalty? Why the fascination with the space between my legs? I believe that the answer to these questions lies in the idea, which many conservatives believe, that female chastity is a, is a supreme value, a virtue that should be lauded and defended at all costs. Such a concept fur furthers the notion that a woman who sleeps with a lot of people, dresses provocatively, or openly expresses her sexuality is a wicked woman. In this sort of belief system, wicked women are sinful, and sinners have to be punished. I do not subscribe to this nonsense. As I've said before, sex is a natural part of life. It is the reason we are here on this planet. I believe that I have the right to express myself se sexually in any way that I choose, within certain boundaries, like proper circumstances, consensual contact, and legality. In other words, I want to fuck when I want to, and I want the right not to fuck when I don't want to. So listen up, federal and state governments. Leave my vagina alone. Focus on improving the economy and protecting citizens from crime. I will not stop talking about sex, having sex, or filming sex until the day I die. Sex, sex, sex! Can you hear me loud and clear, Americans? Okay, I guess I did read the whole article. It's a good article. Um, it is, again, HuffPost Gay Voices, dated September 1st, 2012. And the writer is... Unfortunately, I did interject some thoughts, so it's not truly pure form of her writing, but it's Jincey, J-I-N-C-E-Y, Lumpkin, L-U-M-P-K-I-N. And thank you so much for listening. I like the article, so I thought I'd share. Bye.